A language or a poetic phrase like to be or not to be, right? Famous Shakespeare. He said those words and we associate them with Shakespeare, but at the same time those words are like a cup that's holding the meaning. So what's the meaning of those words? It's about uh, life and death, right? But life and death is not Shakespeare's own... He doesn't own life and death. So in the same way, in Buddhism they say, you know, trust the meaning, not the words. Right? Trust the teaching, not the teacher, and all that, all that kind of stuff. So I think poetry is the same. I'm using language, or I want to, I try to, as a way to get people to get into like a a state of, of poetry, a state of dreaming, a state of like, oh, you know, just take them out of their ordinary life. So if they see Greek or, or, or Tibetan or some other text, then, then they're confronted with their own ignorance. Poetry is like a state of, of, of mind, a state of being. It's like a state of beauty, a state of grace or something. So there can be an experience of poetry that you have in front of a painting or a sculpture or you can have an experience of poetry when you're reading an actual poem or when you're reading a novel you can have an experience of poetry so the way I'm looking at it is like poetry is this uh, a little bit maybe broader scope than just the metrical organization of words uh, that's poetry uh, relating to Buddhism and painting because Buddhism says that phenomena is like a fabric of light Painting is all about that, 100%. It's a fabric of light. Painting says, phenomena is a fabric of light. That the truth of painting is that it shows that our landscapes and our bodies and everything else is like this kind of like uh, smoky illusion made out of like little splashes of color that somebody just sort of slapped together. Buddhism is saying, what you see and what you experience is an illusion.